What's up everyone, Willy Apple here. Today, Apple has released the 5th beta of macOS Sonoma. In this video, I'll be showing you everything that is new inside the software. So the first thing is inside of system settings. If we go down to screen time, this has been improved drastically. And also the screen time actually animates now instead of just completely changes. So that's nice that Apple has changed all this. The next change is inside of accessibility. We're actually going to see Apple has reorganized this entire menu. So it's a lot more in line with iOS now. Another change inside the accessibility menu is that we have a brand new glyph icon for voice control right here. So now it looks like this. It looks a lot better than it did inside the previous beta. Now the next change is inside of privacy and security. If we were to go down to location services and then scroll down, we have a brand new toggle in here for alerts and shortcut automations. So this is turned on by default. Now, this might indicate that shortcut automations are coming to the Mac pretty soon, which we don't currently have inside of Mac OS Sonoma. But if we get this, this will be pretty insane to see. Now the next change is inside of wallpaper and screensaver. So that's the same exact change in here. So you're gonna notice that this now says show on all spaces, whereas before it said show on all displays. I'm not sure how to feel about this change. Hopefully Apple can reverse this since does it make sense to call these spaces these are not spaces at all these are displays not spaces hopefully apple can fix this since it's kind of weird change that apple has made if apple does not want to call them displays they can call it show everywhere or something like that just not show on all spaces please we're look done looking at changes inside of settings. Let's now move over to the widgets, since we got a couple of changes with the widgets. If we were to edit a widget, you're going to see a brand new fading in animation. As before, it used to just pop up just like that. It does not pop up anymore. And you're also going to notice that it now opens up in the center at the top. It just basically expanded but opened up. This is a lot better behavior than before. And it does this for every widget except for widgets that are on the right side. Where it just puts itself as close to it as it will let itself go. And you're also going to notice that you can no longer delete the widget while you're in the editor. The minus button, actually wait no, the minus button is not there anymore. So it just fades out now when you enter the widget. The widget fades out a little bit as well. This is a lot better behavior up since I think if Apple wanted to had a remove widget button, they would put it at the bottom. Now the next change has to do with the home widget. So if I were to bring the home widget right here, you're going to notice that the colors have changed a little bit. So you're going to notice that with the TV button, the TV button is now blue instead of I think it was black before. This looks a lot better. I don't have other home kit accessories, so I'm not 100% sure about every other device. The lights widget always was yellow. And overall widgets just feel a lot smoother inside of Sonoma. The next change is inside of messages. So if I were to send a message with random text, you're going to notice that it no longer just fades out. It just sends it just like that. And it's a lot more efficient and make the text disappear and show it again. It just sends it instantly. Oh, if you're wondering where I got this wallpaper, it was a server side change for beta four. So that means that if you have beta four or five, you will get it over the server. So I guess Apple is now bringing these server side just like it is on the Apple TV. Because this was not initially in beta four, the Sonoma screensaver, but it is now inside of beta five. It was a server side update, which means if you have beta four, you will get this. I'm not sure about beta three. We'll probably never know. Now the next change is inside a terminal. Yes, we actually got a terminal change this time around. We have something similar to what we have inside of Xcode. There's this brand new button right here. So if I were to have a bunch of terminal commands in here, you're going to notice this brand new button right here on the scroll bar. So if we were to do this, you're going to notice that we have a brand new view inside of here. And if we were to just bring up another one and another one, we can have an infinite amount or at least a lot depending on the size of your screen. And you're able to scroll in different parts of it, which is a pretty cool feature inside a terminal. It's pretty cool that Apple has added this inside a terminal. Now we got a couple of bug fixes. Of First one is if you have a Mac Pro 2019, you're going to notice that the music app has been fixed, whereas before it just was very unresponsive, did not work at all, it crashed quite a bit. So if you have a Mac Pro 2019, the music app should work just fine for you. Now the next change is inside a QuickTime player right here. So Apple has fixed a pretty big bug that I have, the biggest bug I've had inside of macOS besides the clock issue. 
or if you were to go into screen recording mode for the dot to appear, it now records when the dot appears up here. It does not take a long time to record anymore, and it's just overall a lot better. Now, another change is inside of Safari. So, they've changed this up once again. The tab groups, you're now able to switch to your profile or open up a new profile window. You're able to do whatever you want in here. You can even make a new tab group in here. Hopefully, Apple can add create profile under new empty tab group because this is the only thing that this is missing now besides a couple of bug fixes. For example, one of them is if you were to go to a website, open a tab and close it, you're going to notice that switch options disappear. So you're not able to switch the tab groups when you open up a new tab anymore, which is kind of unfortunate, but hopefully Apple is able to fix this inside of the next beta. And yeah, we got quite a bit in this update. So now the next was inside a shortcut. So we actually have a brand new glyph icon inside of shortcuts. If we were to go to contacts in here, you're going to see that we have a brand new icon for select email address, whereas before it was a completely different icon, it was a contacts icon. It is now a mail icon. It's not the Apple mail icon that we have right here. It is completely different. So I'm not sure if Apple is going to update this inside of the next macOS beta. I hope Apple does not choose this design as I do not like this design at all. Now we have a little bug that we still have inside of Sonoma where it does not show the outlines here. Not sure if Apple is going to be fixing this. I mean, it does look cool, but it's pretty inconsistent. I could tell this is not intended behavior because of this. If you type something in here and it shows results, the lines come back. So this is how I can tell this is not intentional and that this is just a bug. But yeah, that's all I can find inside of macOS Sonoma Beta 5. Pretty solid update, pretty big. I mean, think Apple is prioritizing macOS a little bit more now since Ventura and Monterey were pretty mid updates, but Sonoma is a pretty big update. So you might see a ton of changes inside of the point update now. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, share this with your friends, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!